so we are uh, performing some operation something like this convolution sum of convolutions like product of summation here product is nothing but convolution operation or product convolution so we can just give something our own operator like this so what we are doing basically this is a matrix bias are there and k and x are some special operation given by us only and uh, adding biases we will get output but it's not like that but not possible as x1 and all are one matrix x1 is not an element to be multiplied these are actually matrix what we are showing but insert that x1 is also in a matrix right x1 is also a matrix it's not an element to be multiplied here like using some cross correlation if we have this filter we can just not apply like this uh, that window what we have from window sliding we can't do because that is also x1 is internally again a matrix so it's like a matrix of matrix x1 is and all one matrix and x1 this thing whole thing is our matrix of matrices so by just defining one special operation we can't like classify that this is our generalized equation right so what we will do is so we can't do like that so we need we just uh, can be able to show that using this here by using matrices we can just slide over around and we can show like that only we can't like they generally show like this in general form we can again define one operation and we can't define like this so this is how it happens we have matrices and it will slide using uh, convolution operation and cross correlation i have just uh, shown previously and we'll get the results as i said for y111 this is a combination of this with this this with this this with this all will be added and by term this one will be added and for the last one if you'll take kernel 2's last this thing as shown for this this also you can get if you want to this one it will be the combination of this and this convolution, this and this convolution, this and this convolution. All will be summed up with bias term this one. I will get this result. And all other things also will get. Actually. So this one is nothing but this and this, this and this, this and this top portion. And this last one is nothing but this and this, bottom one, this and this, uh, this and this. And this top one is nothing but this and top one, this and top one, this and top one. And the bottom one is nothing but this and bottom one, this and bottom one, last one actually. This is the sum of those and biases in each. For this, this bias, for this, this bias, for this, this bias, for this, this bias. So combination of sum of convolution or cross correlation plus adding bias. Two. So we will get the output results. Now we will move to CNN back propagation. So basically, uh, d by dy y is our output or loss uh, derivative of loss with respect to yi we need to find first in the as normal back propagation how we will do because we are getting output over here we need to check this output with the original output or ground truth value which is labeled actually for this image and we need to perform some loss with loss uh, we need to find the loss and then we need to back propagate that loss if it is more means we need to adjust the weights of the kernels in such a way that um, it tries to adjust and it try to optimize and the next time when it performs the next epoch next back forward propagation at that time loss should be less it will not happen immediately but after some episodes or epochs like one forward propagation and back propagation is one epoch so after some epochs it will try to gradually reduce its training error and uh, as a result if it is not overfitted the valuation, validation error and testing error will also be improved and uh, it will um, relatively be more accurate so if we will train properly so that we will do and uh, for that uh, we need to let define what a gradient descent we are using or what loss function we are using it depends on the problem so first we need to find derivative of loss with respect to output so that the thing but the change in output how much it impacts the dependent variable because this is dependent on y so it is independent so the nudge giving the value change in here how much it changed so that's nothing but the gradient or slope what you can say so independent dependent game funda and um, chain rule also you can use so that you can back propagate the loss with respect to yi to other thing like loss with respect to weight so that we will show how it happens so typical uh, derivative game only and here as you can see d by d k i j so we need to find this and then we need to find with respect to kij kij is nothing but the filter weights and bias bi and xj for previous layers so if you can find de by dxj so that it will be helpful for previous layers if we have another this is actually dense layer 
uh, sorry it's actually it's actually a convolution layer right so if previously we have some layers starting layers where the pre-processing or little bit learning happens so that we need to find de by dx so that we can back propagate those information to backward layers so that can use this as a loss uh, it, it uses it can use as a input in back propagation you need to you need to understand whatever you get from forward propagation it gives to this layer this layer acts as input to that layer as if a back backward propagation so because this whatever the this in the uh, this is the first layer and this is the second layer for suppose we are giving uh, output to this uh, second layer and this thing acts as an input to this in for forward backpropagation but in backward propagation where we are going to like uh, in the training step this acts as an input to this because we have changed the things over here based on this right here when it's coming because of this value the here things are getting changed so the changes over here occurred the delta or derivative should be in, given over here so that it can also change so in a chain rule phenomena it happens something like that so how the impact of input uh, like independent and dependent variable plays k and vice versa that's chain rule phenomena everything so that's how the gradient and uh, back propagation gradient descent hap generally happens using these derivatives in a chain rule or so so for example if you want to find this one first so first we will find d e by d k i j so y is nothing but this as you have seen here previously uh, if i want to show you so as i have shown this one and generalized also we can we have given and uh, yeah we can de we can definitely show in terms of i's so as you can see in terms of i's we have said that means we are uh, trying to do in terms of uh, like uh, we, have, we have given notation k11 so inside that we have elements so element wise we can perform definitely as we have shown but we can't generalize with using matrix or we can show b plus k without any numbers and here also we have just given k11 that we can't show but element wise it performs we can show so it's just like uh, we can perform something like this element wise if you want to give notation we can give using the notation but it doesn't happen generally like that that means uh, what i'm saying is some operation is not performed between x1 and k11 so because we can't slide this over here we can slide one of those filter inside this matrix because this is a matrix of matrices for notation we can show but it doesn't happen generally like that it happens inside and from scratch or from depth it happens something like this in high in low level in high level you can just show in the notation term element wise it happens actually inside k11 element wise happens with x1 and add by us to, to get y1 inside that uh, y1 again some for one element here 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 anywhere 